In this video, we will look at the different geometries of channel sections. We can define a regular section as a cross section that does not vary along the length of a channel. Conversely, an irregular section is a cross section that varies along the length of a channel. A prismatic channel is that channel that has regular cross sections. Typically, in open channel flow, cross sections can be simplified into four common geometries. These are rectangular, triangular, trapezoidal, and circular. Rectangular and triangular cross sections are usually reserved for man-made channels. Trapezoidal channels are also used in man-made channels, but they can also be used as a simplification of natural channels. Circular sections are usually reserved for use in pipes. Let's consider a rectangular section with a base width B and a depth Y. We can calculate the flow area by taking the product of the base times the depth. We can calculate the wetted perimeter by taking the sum of the base times twice the depth. We've already covered this when we looked at the irregular cross sections in energy equation. A trapezoidal section is a little bit more complicated to calculate. Typically, trapezoidal sections will give you the base width, also known as the bottom width, the depth, which is, simple, which is represented with the variable y, and two side slopes, which are in this image m1 and m2. The area of the trapezoid is typically found by taking the average of the bottom width and the top width of the channel and multiplying it by the depth. However, the top width varies with depth. Therefore, you may have to find an area that does not depend on the top width. This can be done by separating or splitting up the trapezoidal section into one rectangle and two triangles. We know that the area of a rectangle is base times height and the area of triangle is one half of base times height. Following this, we can get the following equation for the area of a trapezoidal section. The wetted perimeter of a trapezoidal section is taken by adding the width of the base to the length of the diagonal sections. The length of the diagonal sections can be found by applying the Pythagorean theorem. Notice that if we know the equations for area and wetted perimeter of a trapezoidal section, then we can also find the area and wetted perimeter of a rectangular section and a triangular section. In the case of a rectangular section, the side slopes are equal to zero. So if we start with the equation for the area and the wetted perimeter of a trapezoid, and we set the side slopes to zero, we can cancel the amount of the equation and get an area of base times depth. Similarly, we can eliminate them from the wetted perimeter equation and get a wetted perimeter of base plus two times the depth. In the case of a triangular section, the base or bottom width is equal to zero. So if we start with the equation for the area and wetted perimeter of a trapezoid, we can cancel out the base from these equations and end with the following equations for area and wetted perimeter. A circular section is a different monster altogether. Typically, the geometry for a partially full circular pipe is a little bit more complicated to find than the geometry for a trapezoidal section. However, it's not impossible. And you can find this geometry by using concepts that you learned in high school. For this class, since we will look at simplified systems, our circular sections will typically consist of half full pipes or completely full pipes. For a half full pipe, the area is equal to pi times the diameter squared divided by eight. The wetted perimeter is equal to pi times the diameter divided by 2. For a completely full pipe, the area and the wetted perimeter are found by taking the equations for the area and circumference of a circle. Notice that in this slide, we took all of our equations in terms of diameter instead of radius. 
This is so that we don't confuse the geometric radius with the hydraulic radius, which is a property that we will use extensively in open channel flow. As a couple of final notes, let's remember from our energy equation lesson that friction is related to the hydraulic radius. Therefore, we must remember the equation for hydraulic radius, which is equal to area over the wet perimeter. Let's also remember that when we're talking about geometric properties, the P represents the wetted perimeter and not pressure. Finally, let's define a composite cross-section as a cross-section that consists of several subsections of different geometries. One example of a composite cross-section is a cross-section in overbank flow which occurs when water overflows from a channel into the banks.